Hi, welcome to Kingsport, our continuing series of Monster Hearts adventures told in Lovecraft Country. Tonight we'll be starting the 1692 chapter, so we explore the Puritan witch trials uh, in a context of Monster Hearts. Uh, we have a great new cast for you tonight, and we'll be introducing them shortly as we come back to Kingsport. Welcome to Kingsport 1692. Uh, we're going to do this Monster Hearts thing set in Lovecraft Country and during the Puritan Witch Trials. Uh, I'd like to introduce our fantastic cast. Uh, so we'll just go around the table and they'll introduce their character. Uh, why don't we start with uh, David and Chastity Whitburn the Hollow. Yeah, all right. Um, so I'm playing um, Chastity, who um, is the hollow, I said. And uh, I think she, um, her father was for, for a long time and went off into the war, probably multiple wars. Um, he is, uh, of course, Major Justice Whitbourne, as everybody knows. And uh, he has some kind of a, uh, some issues coming back from the, the war. And after a few years, his wife tragically died. He was so lonely and uh, something happened, who knows? But uh, he came back with this niece after a, tra a little bit of traveling, was, uh, chastity, and she calls him father. And uh, she looks suspiciously like his wife did as a child, but there's surely nothing wrong with that, that's fine. Yeah, everything's going to be fine. Everything is going to be just yeah. fine. Uh, Dylan and Mercy, the uh, serpentine reskinned as Deep One. Yes, uh, Mercy uh, Pemilton is a Deep One, uh, and uh, her, her family was uh, long ago sort of exiled to live on land. Um, and she is the, uh, the daughter of Grace and Obadiah, uh, and she has a twin brother, Alexander, and uh, she's very, um, uh, she's somewhat kind of uh, innocent and, you know, a little little naive, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, just trying to kind of figure things out, but her family keeps like close wraps on her and close ties on her, so she's, she doesn't, uh, she doesn't go outside that sphere uh, very often, uh, especially if it was up to her family, but she, uh, she's curious as well. So that's Mercy. Really cool. Uh, let's go next to Leandro, who's playing Afra Moore, the uh, ghost. Yeah, so Afra is uh, the, the, the joking character creation the most normal person in this group and in the fact that the weirdest thing about her is that she's dead and still around otherwise she was the daughter of eliza and the min and concord the minister of the parish here in kingsport and she was and living in that quite puritanical household she was very much chafed and wanted to break out and so was looking for weird people, signs of actual witchcraft, people or things that she can tap into and try to escape. Uh, she found something out in the woods and was basically, and when when she was found again by and the character we're talking about next, she was basically found dead and <laughs> hung up like a witch. But she came back from that somehow <laughs> uh, 
who who she found, like what weirdness she found out there, and decided to kill her to cover her up. Don't know that yet. Uh, we might find that out, hopefully. Uh, but she's come back and kind of like her temperament, her like her snark nature has been kind of drained out by drained out by you know dying. That's a big impediment for most people. Uh, but she's still around in the in the neighborhood. Uh, the only people who really know she's dead are. Uh, the aforementioned next character we're going to talk to and her family. And they're kind of keeping up the pretenses because they're a very well-regarded family in Kingsport. And they don't, they don't want to be known that their daughter is, is died and hung up as a witch. Because who knows what she's been up to. And now she's kind of she's kind of just stuck. And I had this thought during the break in that she almost feels like she feels down that whatever she met out in the woods, she was rejected, essentially. <laughs> As in, no, you you can't be part of this weirdness. You're not. You're just a girl, and now you're dead, and now she's she's, she's stuck. Well, you know, death. This is just the beginning, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so next up is Serafina, who's playing Verity Goodwin, the werewolf. So yeah, uh, Verity Goodwin is a werewolf. Uh, she is not subtle. Um, in that way, she and I are very much alike. Um, and uh, she is being raised by the very kind, kindly regarded uh, Goodwin family. They're lower class, but the mother is the town midwife and the father is a carpenter. Very Christian jobs, very important jobs. Um, Verity is unpredictable feisty, cunning, and about once a month turns into a big, scary red wolf and maybe kills things. A little bit, maybe. Just a little. And finally, uh, Daryl, uh, playing Fortune Greenwood, the witch. Uh, so, Fortune Greenwood is new to Kingsport. She was originally born and raised in Salem, with all of her witchy family, but things got a little hot there and the Greenwood coven had to scatter. So she's made her way over to Kingsport and has kind of set up shop in the Whitbourne house because they needed a servant girl. Uh, the, um, the Whitbournes don't really have anyone to take care of them. So she's gladly filling that role until she finds a way to further ingratiate herself into this new community. Uh, despite the fact that she is a servant, she's shooting pretty high. Uh, she would really like to land herself a husband and kind of establish the uh, family, the, establish the uh, comforts that she knew back in Salem. Uh, she liked, She is interested in Alexander Pembleton, and she has been poking around trying to find more information on him, including pilfering some of Mercy's things so that she could potentially um, peek in and see what's going on with her family. Um, she is also um, kind of on, like she's kind of aware of uh, Verity who has been keeping an eye on her. And so she has uh, been uh, keeping an eye on Verity in kind and, uh, she is not so sure about Afra or Chastity, whom she doesn't know as much about, but she's keeping an eye on them too. Fantastic. Um, obviously, all of you are going to live long and happy lives, and nothing bad will ever happen to you. Probably not. Uh, so, 1692 in New England. Um, let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, there's not a tremendous amount of English settlers in this country at this time. There's about 100,000 in all of New England. And it's a fairly turbulent time. About 15 years ago, there was a uh, large-scale war against the Native American tribes in the area called King Philip's War uh, that destroyed 12 towns and maybe about 10% of the military age population of New England. Uh, so pretty much everybody knows somebody that either died or lost somebody in the war. Uh, in the settled towns like Boston and Salem and Kingsport, 
uh, the area is relatively uh, peaceful and docile now with fields and the woods pushed back, but it's not too far and you're over the edge of the wild into uh, woods that are uh, now turning into second growth forest and are twisted and dark and hard to get through and anything can be out there. People do die from Native American attacks, even nearby. Um, up in Maine, there's a a uh, fairly large scale guerrilla war going on now between the main settlers and the uh, and the natives. Uh, it's also a place that is intensely religiously theocratic. Uh, that is changing slightly in some places as Boston becomes more and more important as a English and not just New England port. Um, English authority and English uh, settlement is starting to change the nature of the Puritan theocracy there. But uh, in this part of Massachusetts Bay, it's still pretty theocratically run. And the thing about New England is that it had been it essentially benignly neglected for a long time. Uh, it was a crown colony, it was chartered by the crown, uh, and there's all kinds of complicated things I won't get into about how Massachusetts was actually two separate colonies because it's too complicated to deal with. Um, but uh, for a long time, New the crown didn't really care too much about New England. New England got very used to doing things their own way and treating things autonomously and, you know, let's be citizens of, of, of England, but uh, not, um, but not uh, necessarily need to worry about doing all the things that English people do. That's why they came to New England. And that has started to change. And a few years ago, as a matter of fact, there was a change in government and uh, all the New England colonies in New York and New Jersey were rolled up into one big dominion, which lasted about two years until they, until they arrested the governor and kicked him out, at which point the crown revoked the charter of Massachusetts and uh, things got complicated for a little while. That has changed. Uh, there's a new charter. It has just returned from England with the influential Protestant minister Increase Mather, but it's pretty unsettled. And then uh, in the spring of 1692, in the town of Salem Village, uh, the minister's daughters started to have convulsions. And the next thing you know, they're hanging people right and left and paranoia and everybody's getting accused and grudges that have been simmering for a long time are now all coming up to the forefront. Uh, Luckily, that hasn't happened in Kingsport until now, because it's going to happen now. That's that's the whole point of this. But we'll get to that in a second. Uh, the other thing, uh, and this comes through a lot in the literature when you actually read what people confess to when uh, they confess to witch trials, is this is a monochrome world. This is a highly literate world, but they have one book. They have the Geneva Bible, and that's it. Uh, the first performance of Shakespeare in the in New England was not until the uh, like 8, 1720 or so. So there's no plays, there's no theater, there's no novels, there's no entertainment whatsoever. It is a dark, scary, monochrome world um, without a lot of comfort and without a lot of creature comfort and without a lot of uh, acceptance that humans have needs other than working hard, going to church, and um, and pretty much that's it. <laughs> Work hard, go to church, make money. But it's also an intensely status conscious place. Uh, and when we uh, were doing Caregen, we went through and did a little meeting house diagram. Um, and there are some people in the back, and there are some people in the front. <laughs> and there are some people that aren't in the front, but want to be. So this is all going to be lots of fun, I hope. Uh, okay, so with that all said, um, I think the thing to do is to pick up on Sunday meeting. And uh, so a period of meeting service lasts mm, two hours, about an hour of which is the sermon. Now, people are pious and they come to these things, but they're still people. So uh, people falling asleep in this thing is common. Sometimes people don't come. People notice when people don't come, but they don't come. They don't always come. Uh, in this case, uh, the Reverend of Kingsport is Pastor Concord. Uh, bleh, I forgot the, which last name it was. Concord um, 
against uh, Mercy's, not Mercy, uh, Aver's body, Concord Moore. But he has given the sermon today to a young minister straight out of Harvard Seminary, uh, Perdition Wilkins. And his text is, uh, is on Matthew. And it is, uh, I say to thee that it shall be easier for them in the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. For he has just arrived from Salem. Uh, now, Reverend Wilkins is a youngish man. Um, he's a little shy, but he's not bad looking. He is unmarried. This was known very, very quickly. And uh, it is a little strange for two ministers to be in town, but uh, as long as it looks like he's only there for as a sort of guest type thing, nobody's really thinking too much about it. Um, but his sermon goes on for quite a while, <laughs> and its main subject is uh, the wickedness of New England, how it has iniquity in the eye of God, that it must uh, repent, and that Satan is not <laughs> metaphorically, but really officially, physically walking among you people, tempting everyone. Uh, so everyone can react however they want to that. It is a fairly uncomfortable thing. But let's grab Aphra after, after meeting or, you know, when everybody is sort of leaving and talking in the streets outside. Uh, so the pastor, uh, has Reverend Wilkins and, um, and he's talking with him kind of, you know, quietly away from you. And then he returns and says, ah, daughter, I, I hope you enjoyed our, our goodly, uh, our goodly brother in Christ's words today. They, they should give us much to think about, I think. I enjoy all sermons about our Lord yes. and she's, she's kind this thing. Her default state is not looking directly at people. It's like her, her, her gaze always drifts off people. And this is kind of the case for her right now. She's, she's not looking at her father. She's looking at the crowd. What, what think you of, of Reverend Wilkins? He preaches with zest, with valor. He he make he makes for a good preacher. And I, it, it, it it's that dull tone. I I I find that your words are in agreement with my own thoughts. This then it should be well, I think, for the town. It, it, if the Reverend Wilkins were to were to stay and minister to this flock. If that thou pleased you, then it pleased me as well. It would please me to know that this town was in good hands when we depart. Did that catch your attention? Depart. Aye, daughter. I think first to Boston, perhaps to Harvard, but only for a little while. I am of mind to return to England, to return to our ancestral land, where perhaps, and he sort of glances around, perhaps you might find more rest than you have found in this accursed land. Uh, her hand kind of goes up to her neck and, and she says, I did not know. I did not know thou sought my rest that much, Father. As thou standest here in front of me, thou art an affront to my position and unto the, into Christ our Lord Himself. Yes, daughter, I wish you to have rest and then find whatever lie, whatever fate lies for you in the next world. I can only pray that that thou hast been elect, but. Either way, this is an this is a curse upon our family, and that you should find speedily a rest shall be a good thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, that 
her gaze goes back to the crowd, and she just she just says, "What, what thou please do, please me, Father." Yes, would that thou had more power to please me in this matter, daughter. I I shall make some calls. Please go thou home and prepare prepare my meals. If thou wish to talk to thy friends, go and do that now, but be thou ready when I return. And with that, he stalks off. So let's swing the camera around. Um, Verity and Fortune, you guys are sort of the outliers in this town. What are you guys up to after meeting? Um... I think that Verity has drifted as far as possible along the fringes of the crowd. And she's sort of listening to people talk, but she's gotten as close as possible to like, there's like a few trees somewhere in between this building and the next one. I'm like trying to fade into the background. Meanwhile, Fortune is in the center of the crowd and she is listening intently on what people are saying around her because she's trying to pick up <laughs> secrets. She's also maybe standing pretty close to the Pembleton family because she kind of wants to hear what Alexander might be saying. And, um, but at the same time, she's, you know, keeps stealing glances at the, the dashing young reverend and uh, wondering, um, wondering as to how how strict, how closely he believes the things that he said about Salem. So, this, this is cool. So, so yeah. yeah, Verity has been watching you frustratingly from the edges. And so you've like, if anyone's watching, they can see her kind of like steal herself and slide through the crowd until she's sort of behind your left shoulder and say, sister, thou art obvious. Um, I don't even like jump because I just felt you come up behind me and I continue to um, gaze maybe just a little too brazenly. Um, and I say, I'm merely interested in what the man had to say. Are you interested in what the man has to say or more in the shape of his frock? I mean, one can be interested in many things simultaneously. You show your interest brazenly and speaking as one who has been noticed in such a way before, perhaps a little subtlety. I sigh a little bit and I, I finally turn around and I look, I look at you fully and it's just like, yes, I, I do believe you've noticed me. I seem to feel you noticing me pretty frequently. I am merely curious about the newcomer in our village, in our town. Aren't you fairly new yourself? I actually forget like how long. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not new. I'm just adopted. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> um, that's it. And I say, I suppose newcomers are rather a draw here. As, after all, that's why I'm directing my attention thusly. Um, Verity, because she is also not subtle, closes the space between the two of us and says, especially one that smells so interesting. Okay, who wants to make the roll? <laughs> uh, well, you closed the di distance, so I think you're you're the one make, taking the move here. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, let me see. What move is it, I guess? Oh, it's definitely turn someone on. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so great. roll with hot, please. Roll with hot. How much hot do I have? I think I have negative hot. No, I have one hot. Great. Oh, God. What did I, what did I roll? Okay, I roll a seven. Uh, let's see. Um, seven to nine, you can give me a string or choose one of the reactions. You give yourself to me, you promise something you think I want. Oh, I give myself to you, I promise something I think you want, or I get embarrassed and act awkward. 
No, they uh, choose that reaction. Right. That reaction. So um, at this point, uh, I'm going to think about that. I think that there's probably a conversation to be had here. So um, I think that maybe I'll be like, I'll say something like, um, this seems a discussion that would be better had in a place more private. Uh, perhaps we should continue it after the sun has set. <laughs> Cat's face. Um, yes, I do think that secrets are better told after dark. So that is my promise. And I'm, I'm going to need to step away now and possibly uh, follow the Whitborns back home. Yeah, I think this is a good time to bring in, uh, to bring in Chastity. So Chastity, uh, what are you and, uh, and Major Justice doing after, Major Justice, good, Major Justice doing after <laughs> meeting? Um, I think maybe um, the Major is just, kind of trying to almost quiz chat on like, oh, what do you think this meant in this? And I think the best chat does is just, um, and what, what is it that you think it meant? Oh, yes, I, yes, I do agree with that interpretation. That was quite astute. That's perfect. Uh, okay, I think you definitely notice Fortune and Verity talking in a in a way that you have decided is possibly intimate. <laughs> I think. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you don't take any. Uh, yeah, you take your cues from Mercy. So, actually, mm -hmm. that sounds like a good idea too. So maybe, maybe you watching Mercy. I think that sounds about right. Yeah, that, that makes sense. So, Mercy, uh, what are you doing? I, I, are you? I, what is the Pimbleton family doing afterwards? So, and, I think, I think mother and father try and, uh, you know, kind of like herding sheep, kind of, you know, escort the children out and try and just get get them home as, you know, uh, with interacting with as few other people as possible, except for, you know, the others, the other known uh, deep ones. Is part of, that are part of their sort of sub community. Okay. Um, so she's being ushered out, but and I think she's on the way out to you know she was definitely watching the. Uh, I think she was watching uh, Afro's conversation uh, uh, too, and, and was kind of just like almost like like kind of mirroring her a, a little bit and like practicing with like putting her hand to her neck, her, her neck and stuff like that. Okay, so let's throw you and uh, let's throw you and Chastity together then, since. Chastity is probably paying attention to you, paying attention to people. I like this, this weird trying to be human loop that we have. <laughs> <laughs> so I think uh, maybe she, uh, uh, she kind of like, a, you know, a, a moment when, the, when her parents are uh, maybe focused on Alexander. Uh, she just kind of like, you know, like, like ducks away. Uh, and just to get some open space, and she's standing. No, no she's standing right, you know, uh, standing near Chastity. Oh, maybe, maybe you would, like go outside or to the to the side of the room or something. Chastity just you look to the side. Chastity's just standing there next to you. Yeah, this could be like right outside she's the door. Following you. Yeah. So we're we're, we're just outside. Um, Mercy, how, did you? Did you enjoy that that sermon? Of course, of, of, of course I did. Did I not look like I was enjoying it? Oh no, you looked wrapped. But my father said it was very good. There was um, some good lessons. Mm -hmm. Yes, he spoke at length. Yes, many many, uh, many lessons. What was your favorite? Oh, um, well, I wouldn't want to, to interject. I mean, well, what do you think 
your fear was. Dear, I pray thee pardon, but I slept. <laughs> I missed. I, I missed most of the most most of the summer. <laughs> I, I think Jesse. I think Jesse looked shocked for a second, but then, reading her face, she says, "Oh no! If if truth be told, it was I found it quite boring as well, and it was all I could do to stay awake as well." But the past, the the, 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 the Reverend Perdition Wilkins was. Uh, he appears to be a fine-looking man. Hmm. I I hadn't thought of that. I, he he speaks uh, with quite quite a lot of vigor. But yes, I he does he does he is easy on the eye. I suppose. So, is that what yes. you mean? Well, he's just somebody. Someone. I guess he's new and different, and he does speak with vigor. Almost too much vigor. I think that's what tired me out. <laughs> Oh. Where are you off to now? Oh, I was, I was about to ask you that same question. I think my parents will. Uh, uh, what, what time of day is it? Uh, let's see. So it's Sunday. It's probably about two in the afternoon now. Well, if if you're if you're um, if you're still exhausted, we could find some shady tree to nap upon. No, I think I've gotten my rest. Uh, I will have to. Uh, you know, I do need to go to the creek. Uh, and bring some water, uh, water back to the house for uh, for dinner preparations. Uh, you know, would you like to get water uh, with me? Oh yes, I, I've been having my servant do that, but it might be an interesting experience to do it myself with you if you need company. You might as well, or, or bring your, uh, you know, your, your, your that your servant is the new uh, the new arrival to Kingsport. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, Greenwood. Well, we'll bring her too. Uh, we'll, we shall all fetch water. That, that sounds like a great, great idea. Wonderful. I'll, I'll meet Fetching you. Water is one of my favorite things. I'll meet you on the path. Uh, I'll meet you on the path uh, uh, shortly uh, once I get home and, and settled in, and, and get my family settled in. Well, that, that sounds great. I should also, and and I'll I'll find fortune in the meantime and meet you back as soon as possible. Yes, that sounds, that's, that sounds, uh, that sounds great. Oh, see you soon. Fare thee well. Of course. I think the thing to do is to have you intrude on fortune and verity at this precise moment when they're, just when the moment is, um, for lack of a better word, pregnant. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, I think as, as soon as Mercy leaves, Chessie's just in a state of panic, like, oh, how do I find her? What? <laughs> uh, then maybe the scene is having found me, found, found them. Where did you two end up? Um, I think we were still just sort of standing in the crowd. Mm -hmm. Like we'd, we'd have that our... moment, and then we were going to meet up later, but mm -hmm. we haven't really moved. I was actually walking toward you because I needed to get away from that for a second, cool down a minute. So I was like, oh, I need to go back with uh, my my masters now. So And so actually I probably walk right up to you. And I give a little curtsy and I say, hello, miss. She she probably looks so relieved. So uh um Quite fortunate to have found you. Um, I was, my friend and I were going to um, fetch some water from the creek and make a day of it. Um, I thought maybe you could come with us. I like look over my shoulder and I, I kind of look back at Verity and I say, yes, I think that sounds perfect. Verity That's is perfect. still sort of gazing at you. <laughs> Give a little wink. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, yes. So, um, is that plan for like right now, basically? We're like, uh, like maybe more emotion that is warranted, and just like does like a little, like clap or something, and then catches herself, and she's like, "Oh no, that that'll be great." Because um, so now I told Mercy that we would we would meet her as soon as possible. Oh, Miss Pendleton will be there, and will her brother as well? 
Oh, I'm not sure. I hadn't thought of it. I mean, it would be so nice to get to know everyone in the town a little bit better. Maybe he could be invited as well. And I think Jesse leans in and she says, uh, well, I think perhaps one of the um, topics of conversation would be the boys around town. Oh, I mean, isn't it more interesting to talk to the boys than to talk about them? Oh, it is. Yeah, that, that does make sense. Do you think that'd be more interesting? I certainly do. Oh, um, yes, perhaps I'll have um, Mercy bring him along. I, I could at least ask. That sounds like a wonderful idea, miss. Um, and what, what sort of uh, paraphernalia is, is uh, involved in fetching water from creeks? Oh, well, we have all of the supplies at home. I do it every day, but we shouldn't just bring the water bearer. We should also perhaps bring something from your father's wine cellar. Oh, would, do, you do you think the Biltons would, would appreciate that? We, we are quite young. I mean, <laughs> um, I, said, I mean, I don't care what that reverend said. We're never too young to have a good time. <laughs> um, I think just the um, just the cogs in Chastity's head are just going, you know, full speech. Oh, yes, I suppose if you, if you think that would be a good good idea, then uh, I could we could try to bring some. Yes, I think that I I mean I know your father keeps it under lock and key, but I'm sure you could find it in his room. Oh, I, I could be. He, he specifically forbade me from going into his room without him. Mm, but, um, well, I think that's just silly, uh, Miss. I think that's just silly, young Miss. It's your house, too, and you're going to inherit it one day, or your husband will, at least. Mm, well, yes. Uh, I do suppose that, uh, just a loan from the future. Yes, of course. Why don't we go and get all that sorted out? I'll make sure that you stop by the, the Pembleton house and uh, make sure to ask Mercy if her brother would like to join. That was such a good idea. Oh, yes, yes, I suppose it was. So I can totally go back to the house and prep all that. And... This, is, this is what I love about being a monster arts MC. My job is basically go, you and you fight, <laughs> you and you kiss. <laughs> yes. Hello, Willow. Starting trouble is my favorite part of Monster Arts. <laughs> Clearly, I have nothing to do here. Um, I like the high, yeah. high class hollow because it's just too easy. Ah, <laughs> uh, Verity. Yeah. I think uh, when you uh, return to your little woodcutter house, um, your mother and father say, ah, Verity, uh, I hope you enjoyed our new uh, minister's sermon. Uh, I, mother, <laughs> I do believe that it was more impassioned than what we are usually given well praise be to god that we have not uh suffered as poor salem village has yes it does seem that those young women are in quite dire straits quite quite um obviously we don't want anything like that to happen here uh, uh, obviously yes by yes. the grace of God. By the grace of God. Daughter, we have been considering that thou art of an age where it be proper for thee to take service at some goodly family in town. You seek to be rid of me. I s no, no, daughter. We seek for you to, to have access to a, a family of higher quality than our own. 
Wait, does she know that she's adopted? Do you know you're adopted? No. Um, okay, so uh, I... And to what family would you send me? What think thou of the temples? You you and, uh, and Kate are, are bosom friends, I think. Kate and I are bosom friends. But I think this is less about giving me access to more social grace and more about you not wanting to bring danger upon your home from your red-eyed, red-haired child, I mean. We, we, we hold not that prejudice. But perhaps you hold the prejudice wherein I speak my mind, and you think that is the devil in me. Daughter, no. We, we, we have always held that you should speak thy mind, not, not, not perhaps as much as a Quaker, heaven forfend, but... If the temples be not to thy liking, perhaps the Pembletons are in need of a servant girl. I'm not interested in being a servant to any of them. Well, daughter, what would you, what would thou do? Thou art still too young to marry, I think. I would rather stay here. With thee. Well, Mother, why do you look so stricken at this knowledge? We know that thou art a strong-headed child, and thou will make a good wife to, a, to, to an adventurous man. And, and surely seek thou, perhaps, to make a new family and a new home somewhere in this virgin land that God hath given us. But thou... Thou art a willful and strong-willed person, daughter, and and thou wouldst do best to learn a little modesty and a little temperance. So be more temperate or be out. But it is it is not uncommon for us for a family to send out their daughter to, or their son to be to be servant or, or handyman. At, at it is a... not uncommon, but I find it interesting that we have this talk today. When we find that intemperate women in other places and their families are held to great suspicion of possession by the devil. Not possession, not possession. Witchcraft, devilish? witchcraft. Do you think me devilish? <laughs> not at all, but... Do you think me damned? We know that thou art not damned. Uh, or as much as any man can know his fate. But daughter, these are difficult times. And so you put difficult things away from you. Not from us. It is for thy own good. If thou could find a family that would be more willing to more bring willing their continents upon thee, daughter, we are afeard of what may come. To you, through me. To thee, not to us. We are poor and have lived a, lo a goodly life. Many, a, many a goodly wife has been hung, and many a goodly man has gone to that same gallows. And you are afraid that you will go alongside me. We are afraid of thee dying, yes. How does sending me away change that? A goodly yeah, family, a family with greater a family with greater status than our own mm. would, would would serve thee in good stead. Think thou of the servant in Salem village who hath accused half the village, it seems, and yet though she was herself accused, she has not yet hung. Think thou that. It's for thy protection we speak, for those times when thou art more wild, when thou hast difficulties. Such is, such is Eve's curse, I know it, but... 
Yes, Eve often turned into a wolf. Uh, <laughs> it would explain a lot. Uh, Verity starts shaking and crying. And oh, so daughter. I, I think you seek to rid yourselves of me. Never, never, daughter, never. And she turns and runs out of the house. Oh, no. Perfect. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, let's check in quick with Afra. What's up with you? Um, actually, I think a move triggered. Oh, good. Uh, a, the ghost comes. In, the ghost playbook starts with unresolved trauma. Whenever something brings to mind your death, you choke oh. up and gain the condition traumatized. If you don't have it already. And so I think her father mentioning that she he wants her to move on. Yeah, this is fair. Uh, yeah. Cool. You're definitely traumatized. Uh, what are you doing? Um, um, by now, you can see that uh, that fortune and chastity are headed out with water buckets on on their yoke. Yeah. Um, actually, my my idea was actually to go find <laughs> Verity. Actually, because mm -hmm. she's the only one who knows besides her family. And Afra's in a state now where she wants to Fuck. unburden herself. And there's only one other person who knows. But they're probably in both very fraught emotional states. Sounds great. That's what being a teenager is all about. <laughs> well, about our pain. Given that you just rushed out of the house, uh, it makes total sense for you to run into the person that can walk through walls and stuff. So <laughs> I invite you to, to partake of the scene. Where does Verity go? Like, uh, or where, where do you think this? She runs into the woods. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because she wants to be alone. Yeah, I think Afra walks through the trees and <laughs> sees uh, is Verity. What's Verity doing? Um, she is sitting on a like a comfy rock, overlooking a small creek and like a little, just like a beautiful small area where there's running water and she's by herself and has is just staring into space I think yeah Avra's walking towards her and Avra just says mm, okay uh, she, she's not she's not good at talking but she just says uh, thou look unwell <laughs> Uh, so speakest the dead. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, so cruel, that's cruel. Uh, that, that like, I'm just gonna shrinks, but it's like, no, no, and she walks. I meant, I meant thee no offense. Does thou not? I'm sorry. I think I have walks in front of Verity, blocking the view. And it Afra just said... It is strange that you have no smell now. Sorry, say that again? It is strange that you have no smell now. Ah. Smell you coming. Ah. I forget your senses are far more blessed than the rest of us. I, I would not... Sorry. Oh, no, go for it. I did not think someone who can slake thy skin off and take on a stranger form would be so distraught. Wolf girl is still a girl. <laughs> <laughs> but thou still art a wolf. Dead girl is still a girl, but she is still a girl. Yes, but I am dead. And that is a far more mundane and petty nature than it is to be a wolf. At least nothing can hurt you. Nothing can happen. Nothing else. Just this state. Just this nature. All I am given to do is to move on and unburden myself from the rest of the world. Who told you you needed to move on? My father. Why canst thou not stay? 
he he sees me as an affront. He knows of my nature, same as yourself. And he has he is to leave for Boston and then to England. Let him go. And he, he aims to take me with him and put me to rest. How can he take that which has no form? Have you considered that no one upon the earth can force you to do anything that you have not a mind to? You are breath, you are air, you are a visage, and no one can make you do anything. But that's it. I can't do anything. I can only exist. I'm, I can only be. I can't change. I can't, I can't evolve. I can't be anything other than who I was at death. Just me, just Afra Moore, a girl who wanted to be stranger, but instead just dead. I mean, I would, I would submit to you that dead is stranger than alive. <laughs> It is the kindest and saddest form of strange. Would you prefer to be dead or to be a wolf? That is not a choice that I am given. If you did have a choice. I would prefer to be safe. And Afra Af Af looks, looks away at that and say, I prefer to be different, but instead I, and she kind of like, and she looks back at you and it's like, I'm, I'm unsure of whether to stay or go. I only, I only wish to find other, other things beyond our our little lives here in Kingsport. I'm afraid I found something that put me put me in stasis. But I don't know. What what can you do when you're stuck? Run. Yourself yourself you can grow, you can love, you can age, you can live a life. But I'll be here. Just here. Sorry, I got distracted by your cat there. It's very adorable. Um, I think that there's probably more that you can do that you don't know yet. You're only newly dead. <laughs> then will you help me? Will you... Will you... Will you... At least... Help me find another option. If I can. Strange. Our foundation of our friendship is happenstance. But it seems you know me better than I know myself. Strangers stick together. <laughs> that feels like scene. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think you cleared your traumatized, yeah? Yeah, that was that was quick. Yeah. Yeah. Well, mark XP. Yeah. Um, Do we both mark XP? Yes, we both mark XP. Okay. okay. Uh, so, uh, Mercy, do you talk to Alexander? Um. So I don't know yet that uh, like have they, they haven't they haven't come up to ask oh, about if Alexander. They have to ask first if Alexander can come. Oh, then let's bring everybody here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alexander and John Baxter are out in the yard. Uh, John has brought over a horse that he is trying to break. And uh, let's have uh, let's have Chastity and uh, and uh, uh, Fortune come walking up. Ah, Chastity. One moment. I just uh, I must fetch the pails. I've got them. Are we ready? Yes, I suppose so. I, I brought um, Fortune with, with us too. 
Um, I was thinking maybe we could um, perhaps make a day of it. She kind of looks to Fortune, like, right? Like, uh, to bring more people. Um, I nod demurely, and I, uh, I um, since there are men folk around, I'm much more contained than I was previously with the ladies. And I, um, I curtsy demurely because I'm just a servant, and I gesture to the basket that I prepared, and I say, I have a, prepared an assortment of treats for my lady and her companions. Alexander, can you get away? What? To, to be with with you old gossips? <laughs> John! Wait, wait, is he... He's like her twin, right? So they're like the same yeah. age? Okay. Yeah. I'm also kind of picturing that I'm like slightly older than them. I'm definitely acting like him. <laughs> that seems fair. Uh, so Alex is like, John! Well, if I, what if I gave thee a guinea for this horse? It's a fine horse, but it's too much horse for you, my old friend. <laughs> so they're they're just yeah, yakking it up and just duding it up here. <laughs> perhaps when uh, uh, perhaps when John leaves, uh, Alexander, you uh, maybe meet us uh, at the creek. Are you offering him a string? Um. I don't think so at this point. I'm just leaving it up to him. Perhaps, perhaps, um, undoubtedly, Father shall send me to fetch thee. Now go, go, the yes. old. I'll try not to stay too long. Go, you old hens. Make sure you bring back water before Mother starts boiling dinner. I shall not. I shall not answer for it. I shall not. <laughs> no, no. Very well, brother. I think after we, if we take a few steps, um, Chastity will be like a real show. Like, hmm, hmm. Oh, mercy. Do you know? Perhaps, you know, we we have um, fortunes. We're supposed to have her bring some water for us. But do you know? Perhaps um, who who was that other servant nearby? Um, I think the Abbott House. And maybe um, they have a servant, I believe, too. And um, maybe if Lazarus wasn't wasn't busy, he could come instead of your brother. Think it, think it, um, wise idea to ask him. She asking, um, I thought she was asking Mercy. Oh, I thought she yeah. was asking, <laughs> I thought she was asking, All right. <laughs> so, um, I just, I, I bow in quietly and I said, um, I'm sure that many households need water, and I'm sure I could, uh, run by and. Uh, see if their servant would like to join us. Who is their servant again? Is the... I think their servants you don't like. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, is it uh, abstinence? <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Sorry, it's abstinence, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm I'm very like because it's been suggested by my mistress. I'm like I'm sure I could ask, but I actually I want to re change that. I want to be like, um, so I'm sure that. Um, I'm sure that the housemaid at the Abbott house is much too busy, and she's almost assuredly gone and gotten her water already. Oh, well, it, surely since, since you've gone to the trouble of these uh, uh, treats for us, um, Fortune, we wouldn't want to waste them just in case uh, you know, the other boys can't come. Maybe Lazarus could come in their stead. So, um, I, I say, of course, my lady. I'll I'll go ask right now, and so I turn around and I, my Wait. face just falls. <laughs> Let's just go, us girls. And I, I look back between like the two of you, and I'm kind of like, hmm. Uh, but I don't say anything because I'm waiting to see what my mistress says. Hmm. Those treats do look delicious, and I think, I think you have just the right amount for us. Oh, well, mercy, I, I didn't have the benefit of the um, of resting earlier. I'm not quite as parched as you are, it seems. 
surely we can share them with others. Come now, Chastity. Let's just go the three of us. These buckets, these empty buckets are getting heavy. Mm. Uh, I almost feel like you're shut down, me. Yeah, I think yeah, it's fine. I, want to I, was roll it. Call, I was about to call it there. Yeah, I was like, I could try and pull strings, but it seems more like that. So, let's see. Pull the bonus. Okay, so that is a a nine plus. What is my call? Uh, wait, my call is no. My call is supposed to be plus two, not minus two. Um, there we go. Uh, so that's a, yeah. So that's an eleven. Wow, that's cool. And we lost. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we we lost uh, Daryl for a second because he uh, lost power. Oh. Oh no. no. Uh, okay. So when you shut someone down on a uh, tenor up, choose one from below. Uh, so I choose the, wait, yep. uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I want to go with condition, but I'm trying to think of a good one. Uh, I do like conditions. What was that? Uh, as a hollow, I do like conditions. Okay. Um, uh, how about like? Uh, What's a good one for, uh, I want to say belittled, but I don't want to say belittled. Uh -oh. <laughs> Put in your rightful place or something? Yeah, like that kind of, like something like, what's a good word? Like, I was trying to think of a good word for that. Or, um, how about knock down a rung? <laughs> yeah. Reminded of thy station. She's actually a higher station, uh, like a higher social. Oh, that's right. She's a higher social class. Um, um, yeah, knock down a peg. That's, yeah. yeah. That works for me. Cool. So mark XP. That's awesome. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. So let's just say fortune uh, ends up having to hang back a little bit probably because you give her the buckets <laughs> um, and you take the treats and uh, when you reach the stream there is a young man cutting wood um, he is he's already chopped down a, he's already chopped up a log and he's just splitting it now he's stripped to the waist he is you know maybe 20 25 uh, well built rangy long hair he's got um he's got some kind of indian arrowhead on his on a necklace around his neck and he is just you know he's doing that put the thing up whack splits in one blow uh and when he sees you two walk up he's like oh good morrow to the young maids so is there like a building nearby or is he just down by the water chopping wood? he's just down by the water cutting wood okay <laughs> I think just Chassie just looked down like, oh, mercy, I didn't expect other people to be about. He is 100% stranger. You have not seen him here before. What cheer, good man? What cheer, young maid? I am Mercy. This is my friend, Chastity. I am called Fear the Lord Wood. It is not such a great name, but it is the one my father gave me. <laughs> it's a strange place to be chopping wood. How will you bring all of this, all of this I, wood? Well, I find myself on thrown back on circumstances, and so I uh, 
I shall split some, some wood here and carry it up. I'm sure that there is some man about town who could use either fuel or, or perhaps wood for which to make utensils or other items from. Surely there must be a woodworker or a carpenter in town, yes? Oh, yes, of course, but did you, did you just arrive this day? Aye, I have just come. Who was our carpenter? Uh, that was the Verity's. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Verity's father. Uh, but I yes, I. Could... Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I could refer you to uh, uh, to, uh, to the Goodwin, uh, for the the man of the house is a carpenter. Ah. Then perhaps I shall apply myself there. And then uh, as fortune comes down the path, <laughs> laboring under the buckets, uh, and fortune- we brought some goodies. Would you like to partake with us? Fortune, there is a young man stripped to the waist, well-built, long hair, maybe <laughs> about 20 years old. He's been cutting wood and has worked up a nice sweat. <laughs> and he sees you, it's like, ah, what a lusty lass this must be. How uh, fair thee, young maid. Uh, I fare well, good sir, although I must say your lack of modesty is quite alarming. I, um, we Forgive are... me, I had no idea that such young maids would be down in this area on meeting day. Um, so, as you can plainly see, we are here to gather water. Ah, forgive me, I, uh, I am height, fear the Lord would. Um, and what does thou friends call you? Well, I have no friends in this town unless thou shalt be my good my good friend immediately. I think next week that like oh, my friend like oh sorry so at this point uh, yeah fortune looks between as so it's chastity and mercy who are talking with this strapping young man. This is it. Named for the Lordwood. <laughs> the Lordwood. Okay. Um, so, at this point, I set the I set the uh, water pitchers down, and I go to the basket, and I begin to pull it out, and I say, uh, "Well, if we are to be friends, then you must uh, partake of our uh, partake of our snacks." Well. I can I cannot but say that I have worked up an appetite and have not eaten though this day and more. But in if we are to be friends, then I shall of course resume a more modest condition. And he throws on his shirt quite slowly. <laughs> um Fortune actually wants to take this opportunity because this is this is not a sight that is new to her. Um, so she wants to take this opportunity to see how Chastity and Mercy are reacting to this. Well, you have three friends now. So what shall we call you? Uh, Fear the Lord? Or do you prefer something uh, smaller? Well, they say Joseph was a man who worked with wood. Perhaps Joseph, then. Okay. Very well. We shall call you Joseph. And I shall I call thee what? Oh, thou art mercy, and thy friend is... Uh, chastity. Mercy, chastity, and fortune. Ah, chastity. I see we all must bear a cross of a name in our own way. I, I speak for yourself. And the goodly maid, what art thou called? Uh, okay. So, at this point, I think that um, Fortune will probably, like, you know, um, she'll readjust her hair in such a way that it kind of, like, reveals a little bit more of her neck than is strictly proper. Um, but then she'll, like, hold out a small serving of, like, uh, a slice of bread with some with some cured meat on it, and she'll offer it to the man. 
And no, uh, no apple. <laughs> it seems someone has been listening to Tall Tales. Tall Tales. Well, uh, so why don't you take that role there? Because that <laughs> sure sounds like what you're doing. <laughs> um, okay, so my hot is a plus one. Where's the roll? Submit. That's a. Uh, stuck in the right middle there, so it's a 10. Yeah, it's an 11. Okay, so yeah, it's an 11. It's a hard success. Uh, well, you're going to gain a string on uh, Fear the Lord Wood. <laughs> and they choose a reaction. Um, he, takes, he takes the bread from you and grabs and grasps your hand. It says, it is indeed a well name that thou bearest, for surely this is fortunate. My lusty lass, know thou of a goodly carpenter in town who might have service, who might need service of a woodcutter. Um, what are the what are the girls thinking of this? So, well, Mercy's definitely like enamored by him, but she's just so awkward. She has like uh, no idea, like really, how to act on it. Yeah, and I, I think uh, Chassie was trying to um, mirror what Mercy was doing, but now that Fortune's come along, I think she's almost um, switched her focus and, and maybe is um, kind of, you know, looking at him with the same eyes that Fortune is maybe. That's it. Uh, I think at this point, I'll probably, uh, I'll wait a beat, but then I'll withdraw my hand. And I'll say, um, I think there is a carpenter who may be looking for an apprentice in the village. Um, it would behoove you to uh, head in before sundown to see if you could find some lodging. Well, sh well surely thy mistress would, uh, could spare you a moment to conduct me to this woodcutter, to this carpenter. Uh, I, I look at chastity and, um, and I say, um, young miss, uh, this, this man is obviously in need of some stern direction. So, uh, it is with, uh, I promise I will be gone no more than 30 minutes. Oh, well, what would it be, she, she may be says this quieter, but not not so that anyone can't hear it, but uh would it would it be proper for you to, to go and escort it? Uh I I say, oh miss, I'm I'm but a servant. Uh, I'm but a servant. It's as um a fine tradesman like this obviously has his eyes set much higher than me. Um, no, I, sorry, I don't mean to, and then looking at both of them, like, not to, not to make any assumptions, of course, um, I'm sure, I'm sure it's fine if, if you think that's best, Fortune. Um, at this point, I actually, uh, I pull out of the basket, I pull, did, did Chastity actually snag that wine bottle? Um... If there weren't any uh, huge odds, I bet she, she probably did. Uh, so at this point, I pull it out and I actually like open it for you and I pour a little bit into two cups and I offer it to each of you and I say, um, please, Mrs., join or uh, enjoy your your brief uh, your brief distraction in the woods while I make sure that this man finds finds his way to a a more righteous place. <laughs> and then, so at this point, I'm going to take my leave with the, uh, the 
dashing down the woodcutter. And as soon, yeah. as, they're, mm-hmm. Go as, ahead. As, as soon as they're kind of like, you know, uh, uh, down the path a little ways, uh, uh, Mercy just jumps the dumps the wine on the uh, you know out of the out of her cup. Says, "Come on, let's follow." <laughs> well, anyway, Fortune, as you walk up the path, uh, Fear the Lord leans in and says, "Well, if I had if I had seen such good ministers for the sacrament, I should go to meeting more often. We can veil this, but whatever you want, have, however you want this scene to turn out, he is giving himself to you." <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh. As long as he's, yeah, as long as there's no danger in the situation, I'm fine with it. Just kind of, uh, you know, we go off into the woods and we do our thing. And actually, um, what I'd like to know is if um, Chastity and Mercy go and watch. Totally. <laughs> I, feel like instead of jump, I feel mm-hmm. instead of dumping that wine glass on the ground, Chastity just like downs it on and follows Mercy. <laughs> into possibly watching this. There's like a down tree uh, that we're like we're able to like it's a big tree that we're able to hide behind, and we yeah. kind of like peer underneath. There's a little gap underneath. We can peer underneath it. Yeah, and so the only thing that I want to say is that as as um, Fear the Lord and I are doing whatever we're doing, um, I actually make eye contact. Learning why they're calling Fear the Lord. Would. <laughs> I definitely make eye contact with the girls, and uh, there's now like a, like a, you know, you've seen me, but I've also seen you watching. So, <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Um, <laughs> I'll just, uh, so, cool. Um, so Verity, <laughs> you're out sweeping the. Uh, Sweeping the front yard mm. when uh, a well built young man with long hair tied it back and and fortune come walking up the, up the drive. Um, is it nighttime? It's probably like sunset. Okay. Um, cool. Um, so, um, so I put down, uh, the broom and walk to the edge of like, I guess, do we have like a fence? I guess we have a fence maybe. Um, and, uh, and say, um, fortune, I see you've kept our appointment. Who is this young man? I um uh, is is are you, are we walking like arm in arm or are we keeping you know a respectful distance? <laughs> totally keeping a respectful distance. Okay. He's played this game before. Of course he has, and it's not my first time to the rodeo either. So, <laughs> um, I definitely um, I um, walk right over to Verity and I say um. Why yes, uh, I am always very, I'm always very particular to keep my promises. She uh, she turns to fear the Lord, and I guess would shaking hands be a thing that people do? How do they introduce themselves to each other? Um, you would curtsy to him, probably. <clears throat> she holds out her hand. <laughs> uh, I just I want to know what your intent is here because I'm totally happy with Lee rolling if you want but if yeah. it's just a handshake that's also cool. it's just a handshake I mean it's it's okay she's intending to show dominance like that's like the, the wolf in her oh okay yeah he, is she uh, trying to dominate him or is she trying to dominate me everybody all the time <laughs> <laughs> well now they told me that manners in Kingsport town were uh, different and he shakes your hand quite firmly I am height fear the fear the Lord would I understand you are the carpenter's daughter such as it is you'll find that many things here are different 
I'm intrigued. What a fascinating town. Would, would thy father be in need of an assistant, a handyman? I, I am, I can tell, I can, I confess to thee, immodest as it may seem, I am known to be quite the axeman. I suppose you would have to take that up with my father. Gladly I would. He is within. Shall I go in unannounced, or? No, I will announce thee. Cool. She rides over to the door ahead of you, opens it, and says, Father, there is a young man here who wishes to lend his excellent service as an axeman. Oh. Well, um, all right then. Um, help thou thy mother. And so uh, he steps out, and you can hear them talking, and then talking, and then laughing a little while, and then talking some more. And then they come back and says, excellent, excellent. Daughter, fetch, uh, fear the Lord here, uh, a, goodly, a goodly tankard of ale. He shall sleep in our barn tonight, and tomorrow he shall help me clear the lower acres. I think if we bring in enough wood before winter, we shall... Very, we shall surely do well upon this year. I will fetch him ale. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Thank you, daughter. She disappears into the kitchen, comes back with it and says, Father, may I go with Fortune for a while? Oh, of course, thy friend Fortune, yes. Um, Stay, stay that not out too late. <clears throat> One never knows what lurks in these woods in these dark days. Yes, the moonlight is dangerous. Full of terrors, too. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Let's hold off on that for a sec. Yeah, for sure. Afra, your friend Grace, John Baxter comes banging on the door to the rectory. Uh, as in, he's just banging on the door? Yeah, he's banging on the door. Hmm. Okay, I probably don't know that's that's him. So I open the door and just stare at him. Yes? Uh, Mr. Safra, is, is thy father in? I am, I am greatly feared for my sister. Is he in? Yeah. Do I say that again? Actually, no. You know what? He's not. He's still out on rounds. Let's change, mm. change that. My father is off doing the Lord's work. Uh, and kind of very impulsively, she says, well, what, what ails your sister? I know not. She has never suffered from the falling sickness before, but this evening she collapsed upon the ground and began to roll about it, screaming in agony. And then she said that she felt pinpricks and pinches upon her body. And she, she claimed to see things that were not there. I, I am not a wise man or, or skilled in these matters, but in these days... Mayhaps, <laughs> mayhaps I see her? I'm 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 merely, I'm merely a minister's daughter, and but I I would like to see my what ails my friend so I so I may better report to my father. Yes, yes, of course you are. You've always been a good friend to her. Perhaps perhaps this shall be enough to bring her out of the fit. For our, I fear what else it might it might port for friend. For, uh, good. So uh, yeah, he he he's moving quickly. He's death deathly scared right now. Um, but when you come in, they've put Grace in bed, and she is rolling around, and her limbs are twisted in uh, in an unnatural configuration, and she is in agony. Mm, I think I'm gonna rush forward and like Grace, Grace, my dear, what's 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 afflicted you and she and i, I was trying to hold her down 
Ah, she I'm is what? upon me! She is upon me! She kneels upon my chest! Ah, she pinches me! She pinches me! Who pinches thee? I know her what? not! Some old crone! What? And... And I think uh, she after goes to John, uh, looks at John and says, "Fetch, fetch thee some th- some warm water to calm her to calm herself, or cold water actually. It's cold water." Of course, he he t- he runs downstairs. Yeah, and we're two together, and Afro turns back to Grace and says, "This this this crone that afflicts you. Tell me more of her." I know not her face, but. But she cackles at me. She she laughs at me. She points at me and says the most strange things. What strange things? Tell me more so I can help thee. She she says She says that thou art just a spirit. Yes, who? Myself? It, it it must be some bizarre fantasy. Oh, she speaks with the devil's tongue. She must be trying to lie to me. Aphra, Aphra, I fear for my soul. Your soul? And Aphra is trying to grip, but I think her, <laughs> that her... Does that, does that count as bringing up her death? No. Oh, no, that would, that would be too much. If everyone just says, well, oh, you're a ghost. I called that's... you a spirit, so... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, no, that definitely counts. So, so Aphra's... Uh, <laughs> her grip tightens. And... And... And she's like, Grace. Grace, if if this crone doth speak to thee, will perhaps you be able to speak back? She listens to me, but then... But she's... But she bides me not. She bides you not what? She does not listen to me at all. Oh, help me. Say the Our Father with me, for I... My tongue cleaves to my mouth when I try to speak it. Oh, pray for me, Aphra. Pray for me. And I think... I think they, they'll... I think just to calm her down, Aphra will say, Our Father, thou art in heaven. I f- forgot how the all fire works. That's totally okay. Uh, can you say that? I mean, you are a ghost, and you are currently oh, traumatized. Okay. All right. Yeah. I think. <gasps> no. I think. I think. No. What happens is that I for kind of it's gripping, but she's looking away from from Grace, and she starts saying, uh, "This witch doth want nothing of you. You're merely a pawn in her scenes. She wants myself." She wants my tainted soul, Grace. What? What, what do you? What do you mean? You, thou art good. Thou art. Thou art kind. Thou art I, the, daughter, the minister's daughter. I am but flesh, and bone, much like yourself. You would do well to seek better. Be- better examples. I, I sought, I sought things. I sought darker climes, and I've paid that price. But you should not pay that price for myself. Which, if thou thou hearest me, know that you not you need not take it on grace. She has done nothing. She's 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 a kind soul. She has no stains. On her being not like myself. Not okay. I think John comes back up and sees you, and he calls you over. And says, Is she any better? Is this just a fit? Has, perhaps, perhaps something she ate. Uh, has Grace calmed down, or is she still? She she's sort of lapsing into uh into a kind of she's kind of passed out, but not passed out. You know that kind of state. She's just too yes. exhausted to actually be upset right now. Yes. Uh, I think Afra nods like her fits have calmed down. I I I said I said a few prayers. The Lo- the Lord's prayer always provides a boon. Uh, I will I will take my leave. I'll, I'll find my my, fa- my father. He he will he will give thee the best help. 
can give he is our minister uh take this compress and put and take the towel and press it upon her forehead make sure she does not burn up thinks thou that this this be witchery african sway and <laughs> says take this take care you are you and yeah she she's kind of she is she is a loss for words her her mind's kind of scrambled and then takes her a while to find her words and says i f i fear that i know i know only that your sister is a kind and gentle soul and if any any affrontery come of her it is not her fault now let's check in with Verity and Fortune. Uh, so I guess we start walking back towards where you were because you have to go back there anyway. Um, where do we leave so off in the square? So uh, I say, you were um, you were casting aspersions, saying I had roaming eyes. Are you denying that your eyes were roaming? Mm. No, I'm not denying it at all. Our dear friend, fear the Lord, seemed potent. Very. She, uh, she like kind of moves a, like inappropriately close to you, even though we're walking side by side and says, you know, I can smell you on each other. I would have assumed nothing less. In fact, I wonder perhaps if you maybe enjoy it. Are you suggesting that I take some sort of unclean pleasure in your exploits? I don't think there's anything unclean about a woman taking what is rightfully hers. And what is rightfully yours? I think that a woman has every right to her pleasure and to her body and to her own joys. And at this point, I also like loop my uh, loop my arm through yours, and uh, kind of uh, run my fingers uh, delicately over the back of your hand. Pick up those I, dice um, and roll. <laughs> <laughs> roll them bones. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! What happened? You roll like plus hot. Oh, I think I got like a three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a three. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, like I'm pretty obviously laying it on, and I'm also not not making any um, like I'm not being very subtle at all about the fact that I would also lean into the most unnatural sins. <laughs> so you're leaning in, and all of a sudden you hear a rustle in the woods, and uh, your friend Rachel comes out. God. It's like fortune, <laughs> oh fortune. <laughs> Fortune. Okay, so uh, I'm not Rachel. Rachel. Um, uh, abstinence. No, it's right. abstinence. Yeah. Okay. Um, right? Yeah, she's my my witch friend, my magic buddy from Salem. Mm -hmm. Abstinence. Um, Fortune. Hear, I must talk with the uh, Verity under her breath. Go. Oh, the other one. <laughs> I must talk with the. Um, um, it's servant stuff. <laughs> servant stuff. Oh, yes. Um, very important servant things. Um, so I unfortunately untangle myself from Verity and I say, um, I would very much like to keep my promise, perhaps later this evening. Later. Shortly. She, like, basically vanishes. Like, she just turns and disappears into the woods. That's, you, I, you can see that. Yeah. 
and so I turn to abstinence and I'd be like, abstinence, it's been so long. How have you been? Yes, well, sorry to inflict my name upon thee, but... <laughs> <laughs> Grace Baxter has had a fit. Already there, already the servants are whispering about town that she has been bewitched. Didst we not have an agreement, thou and I? Uh, so immediately I am just panicked because I am scared that it's happening again. So uh, I. I like lean, like I, you know, close the distance between abstinence and I, and I take her hand and I'll be like, I have done nothing, sister. What, what has happened? Do you, do you know? Did you do something? And you were just trying to blame me? I, I would do nothing to Grace Baxter. The, uh, John Baxter. That's a different story. But Grace never. Baxters. Why, why should we afflict the Baxters? So they, they, they're not important. What are you sure? Are you sure that this isn't like the other girls back in Salem and they were just making making it up? Not all of them were making things up, thou knows that. We will leave the past in the past, and we will only focus on what is happening now. Do you swear on the unholy moon that we have both danced under that you did not do anything to Grace Baxter? I did nothing to the girl. I swear as well. Thou by the book? I swear by the book that I did nothing to the girl. It would seem that perhaps we should... Perhaps we need to partake of the wisdom of those in the air. But we lack a third sister. So, um, just kind of want to establish, um, like, are we, do we need like an actual witch or can it just be a, a, a woman? That's an excellent question. I mean, it sounds like it could be very interesting if you just need someone to agree to do it and then maybe sign a book or something, you know, <laughs> um, that sort of thing. <laughs> uh, so... Let's see here. At this point, do um, I? I think about it, and I do. I hear anything? Do this because I feel like everyone's pretty much except Afra is like listening in on this conversation. Um, they're obviously hearing that we are like not just being like terrible women, but also actual witches. So, did any? Of I think happen? if you're spending a moment to like consider, and then it hits you that you're afraid you're being overheard. That is one f that is, I think, keep your cool. Okay. Because, uh, you know, on a 10, you'll be able to ask me a question. And okay. I think that is the right thing. Let's see. All right. So I'll do that. Um, I think and my so we can, so we establish chastity and, and mercy. You guys have been watching this all along, yes? <laughs> okay, good. That's fantastic. Okay. I got a five. So I have definitely not kept my goal. <laughs> and that was actually two roles that I failed, so I keep I need to continue the market experience for that. Uh, yeah, so I have absolutely no idea what to do. Uh, I think actually that um, I realize that you know the young lady of my house has been especially um, impressionable, and I was able to convince her quite easily to do some things that she wouldn't have done otherwise. So I turned it back to Aston's and I say, meet me at the Whitbourne house at midnight. I think we can make that happen. Um, as you do that, you, you, you step forward mm -hmm. and you feel something under your foot. And when you look down, there is a little poppet in the shape of Grace Baxter. And I, you can see the hex marks all over it. So um, I pick it up, and I can still feel like the charge of the magical energy that was used to cast it. And I turn to abstinence, and I hold it out to her, and I say, and where did this come from? This is 
not my work. Neither is it mine. Well, I thought that we might be the only ones here, but it seems that we are not. <sighs> These are dangerous days, sister. We should not be seen together. And she turns and runs down the path. I uh, tuck the poppet into my apron and I quickly scurry back to the town as well and along a different route. That sounds about right. So uh, we're almost up on time. So let's just check in, I guess, on Chastity and Mercy since they were watching all this. What are you guys thinking? So did did Afra like uh, like kind of join, like come up behind I, us? Please? I was considering this, but because we're running, we're about to wrap up. That might make the scene longer, so it's probably not. Gonna, we might happen near the very end, but it probably won't. So I think we're like, uh, I think uh, Mercy's definitely like in awe, like can't believe this because she didn't even think that was like, she's, she's heard of this whole witching thing, but didn't really put much stock in it. Is she a witch? Are they witches? Quite some time now, and I surely wouldn't notice that. Although, what was she doing with Fear the Wood? Was that, do you think that witchcraft? I don't think that was witchcraft. I may be, I may not get out much, but I don't think that was witchcraft. It was quite the curious ritual. I'm more, I'm, I'm sure about that one. That's. Oh, my chastity. <laughs> That's a whole nother issue that we need to work on. <laughs> but they said they were going to meet at your home. So, well, I suppose it it is still early in the day, but that's where she would normally go. I'm not, she didn't seem sinister things. Should we bring this to the elders before it becomes an issue? I, I didn't catch. Did you say I didn't catch your response? Oh, Jack. Uh, so she, she seemed innocent to me. But what do you think? I know not. Hmm. I, I also know not. Tell no one. No, I, I no, probably, I won't. I should probably, I should, I should probably return home. They're gonna wonder where the water is. Oh yes, um, and I should return this wine before my my father gets thirsty. Well, I bid you good evening. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think Jesse goes like right back home. Yeah, and I think Mercy kind of heads home. Cat Chastity went home with extra buckets of water, I think, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, wow. So <laughs> that seems like a good place to stop. Uh, next time, we'll have the exciting meeting at the Whitcombs, perhaps, or at least some attempt of, of our uh, dear friend uh, Fortune to drag poor Chastity into a witch's coven. This will work out well. <laughs> I think it's going to be fine. There's not a house of gingerbread deep in the woods. Oh, it's going to be great. I was hoping for a house on chicken legs. Yeah. Oh, that too. Yeah, that would be good too. Uh, well, I'm going to do... Oops, that's not the thing I wanted to do. Uh, let me do this. Ah, I'm in the wrong place. I'm going to open up the... Uh,
the uh, Discord channel in a sec. And yeah, okay. And uh, I'll do that in the other chat room. Uh, and other than that, uh, wow, this was great. Thank you all so much. Uh, I wasn't sure how this would work out. Uh, and the answer was pretty good. So uh, with that said, I guess I will see you all next week. And uh, I'm loving this so far. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. This was great.